There we go. So now you should be able to see my screen, which says nothing. Correct. First of all, I'd like to apologize for starting an hour late. I accidentally booked two talks on the same day at exactly the same time. So my apologies and thank you for all the attendees here for allowing me to postpone it by one hour. So first of all, what have wallpaper cleaner and Play-Doh gone in common? And what is the significance of that in 2020 and 2021? So a little history of uh, Kutol wall cleaner is that basically what it is was a kind of blob of paste that you moved around your wall to get soot off your wall. In the, in the days when, when there were fires burning at home and coal fires and wood fires in the house, they left a real kind of sooty residue on everything. And you used this Kutol wall cleaner by pushing it against the wall and taking off the soot. But all of a sudden, after the Second World War and, and, and just before the start of the Second World War, everything became electrified and there were less and less people burning stuff inside their home. And at the same time, less people were even putting wallpaper on the walls. They were simply now starting to paint. And the Kutol wallpaper company, wall cleaner company, found themselves in deep trouble. But they really were. They couldn't they weren't sure what to do and how to pivot. When all of a sudden the guy that owns Kutol happened to talk to his, I think it was his cousin or his sister-in-law, and she said to him, you won't believe what my kids do with Kutol wall cleaner. They take it, they mold it into small little animals, they allow them to dry and they paint them. Wouldn't it be a wonderful idea if you took Kutol wall cleaner, added some color to it yourself, and in fact, you could call it Play-Doh. She even came up with a word. So this is just an amazing story of a company that pivoted, a word that I absolutely hate at the moment because everyone is supposed to pivot. But what they did was they found a new avenue for their product. And that's kind of where we are at the moment. And today, I'm going to talk to you all about social media. And I like to call this talk what I learned about social media at 14,000 feet. Because what I did was I decided just before lockdown to actually jump out of an airplane at 14,000 feet strapped to some guy. Now, people would say to me, are you insane? Aren't you scared you're going to die? The answer is, yes, I am insane. Yes, I was scared I was going to die. No, I didn't want to. So here I am. I'm strapped to this guy. We're in the plane. We're about to take off. And suddenly I realized that I have unbelievable faith in the guy that I'm strapped to. It's hard to explain just how much faith I had in him. Because this guy obviously knew what he's doing. He'd done the research. He'd packed his own parachute. He checked all the harnesses. It, the lesson that I learned was that there are people that know more about things than we do. And sometimes we need to trust them and learn from them. And eventually we just simply have to jump. And that's another thing that I learned. So I actually did it. I jumped out of the plane at 14,000 feet over Mossel Bay. It was absolutely wonderful. I was a little bit petrified and but it was absolutely wonderful. So a little bit about who I am. As you all know, my name is Mike Said. You can find me on Facebook at Mike Said What. You're welcome to follow me. I'm a little bit of an oversharer. You'll find out what I cook every weekend, but that's it's your choice. I'm also on Twitter at Mike Said What. Twitter at the moment, very, very angry place. It's, it's not a place for marketing at the moment. Everyone's angry, screaming. I think it has to do with how few characters you have to get your, your message across. So I'm not going to talk about Twitter from a marketing point of view. Instagram, I'm a little bit, I'm, a, I'm on Instagram, I'm more a voyeur than, than, a, than a participant. I do post, but I love watching. There's incredible content on Instagram. It, it's content rich. It's image rich. It's video rich. Um, so many more channels are using Instagram as, as a marketing platform because of its ability to get a message across so quickly and so creatively. But if you're going to be on Instagram, you have to have good imagery. That's not the place to post low quality images. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. And then, of course, you will find me on YouTube. And as I've started doing lately, is posting most of my videos to my own website. So one of the things I have switched recently, and I'll talk about that a bit later on, is I have switched more from YouTube to Vimeo when I post my own things because of some things that Vimeo offers. It's a, certainly a much higher quality video, and it offers more control over who can watch, who can't watch, and who can download your videos. But I'm a, I watch on YouTube. I post more to Vimeo. 
I'm also on WhatsApp on 0813982190. And as I say in every one of these, and I'll say it a bit later on, please, no voice notes. So I have already uploaded the presentation for you. In fact, ignore that. I will reload it because I went and rebuilt my website. So I will post the presentation for all of you. I'll gladly email you a link to the presentation if you'd like it. You'll find me on mike at mikesaidwhat.co.za. Please follow me. I'm happy to share everything. But please, no voice notes. They drive me completely insane. Four objectives of this presentation. First of all, I want to introduce you to social media. So many of you are nervous. You're scared. You're unsure. Is it a safe platform? Uh, will they steal my data? Sorry, bad news. They've already stolen it. They've got everything I need to know about you. They already know. Uh, people that are, are kind of anti-vax, and this is not a vaccine debate because they're worried about tracking. Don't worry. You're carrying a tracking device in your hand every single day, whether your phone's on or off. They know where you are. They know what you're doing. They know who you're shopping with. They know who you're talking to. So we're being tracked. I also want to calm you. I want to just show you that there's, there's nothing to fear about social media. Baby steps. Uh, those of you that are intimidated and think, oh, I can't get this right, you're going to do one thing, just one thing differently today. If you get that one thing right, you've already made a major step in that. I'm going to inform you. I, I, I can't promise you that I won't tell you is the best. I can tell you that it's the best for me. These are things that have worked for me and they work for my clients every single day. And then importantly, I also want to inspire you. I really want to get you to go and do things differently, to look at social media, to look at the world, to look at marketing in a very, very different light. And in order to do that, the first thing I want to do is talk to you about seven major shifts in marketing that are really changing the way we interact with people. The first one is a shift towards honesty and transparency. Now, not to say that everything you read is honest, but the ability to do the research is what's forcing people to be more open and honest and transparent in everything that they do. And the example I always use is that just 15 or 20 years ago, you trusted your doctor over the word of God in most cases. If your doctor said to you, go home, get into bed, be there for three days, take the following medicine and don't get out of bed, you listened. It was as simple as that. There was no question. Now on the way to the doctor, I'm already Googling my symptoms. I'm on md.com. Uh, by the time I'm finished, I think I've got 15 ailments that I didn't have before, and I'm sure I'm going to be dead by the weekend, but that's a whole other story. We get to the doctor. We're on our phones, checking things. He says something to you. You're Googling his answer. You're Googling the medicine that he recommended. You want to see if there are alternatives. Are there side effects? It's, it's caused a real switch to the fact that we can't just post anything because it's going to be copied. And a great example is I cut my teeth as marketing manager at Mug and Bean. And those of you who remember that wonderful story on the back of the Mug and Bean menu about uh, Mug and Bean and how they met in California and they started the roastery. Of course, it was all nonsense. It was a made up story. And if Mug and Bean were to try and create that kind of story right now and pass it off as the truth, hashtag Mug and Bean are lying would be trending. So there, you need to be a little bit more aware of what you say to your customers, that they can double check you at any time. There's also a switch that perception has become more important than reality, which kind of flies in the face of honesty and transparency. But for small business owners, this is very, very key. If you want to make yourself appear to be bigger than you are, you need to make sure your website is professional. You have a business card. You you. You have an email address with your own domain on, not mike at I'm too cheap for my own domain dot com. Um, you, you can't expect people to get a scrap of paper with, a, with a, a cell phone number and a Yahoo address, and then you ask them for a big deposit. You've got to make sure that your invoicing software works really well that you're able to send them a professional invoice. Everything is around this perception and reality. That how you appear. I mean, very often people say to me, so where do you work? And I say, well, my office is very near my home. In fact, it's actually in my bedroom. I'm sitting in a wall at a desk in my home or, or it's my dining room. But it's just those little things that that thing. There's also a real switch away from interruption marketing. Interruption marketing is um, billboards, advertising in magazines. And you, we all know that magazines are disappearing to understand that that kind of advertising is proving to be completely ineffective. Um, 
television advertising and interruption advertising in the middle of the program, suddenly the advert comes up. So what do you do? You quickly shift channels. If you don't shift channels, then you, you pause it and you come back and you PVR it. That's why what we are seeing is an increase in those lower third adverts at the bottom of the screen. Uh, while the president's talking to us about um, um, masks and, and COVID, suddenly there's an advert for FBOB or some life insurance company that'll insure you if you die. And you can't switch because there it is. So there's less interruption marketing. The one form of interruption marketing that really is still working is radio. Very few people switch to the radio channel just because the adverts come on. So I always advise my clients, if you have the budget and you have the means, start looking at radio advertising. It's a very effective form of advertising at the moment. Another big swing to show, don't tell. Don't lecture people about your product. Don't make them read pages and pages and pages of stuff on your website about how good your product is. Let them rather watch one video or watch a couple of pictures or some kind of graphical representation. It's become increasingly important that we're able to show people what we do and not just tell them. So that's another big switch. Another one, targeting and segmentation. Huge, this one, is the ability to understand that we have a limited budget and not everybody is our target market. So this ability to establish who your target market is and to speak to them in a language and on a platform that they understand has become increasingly important. It's None of us can afford television advertising running into millions of rands aimed at everybody in the hope that one person sitting in his couch somewhere near you will get it. So what we do is we go onto social media platforms and we target. We look at, I want to speak to women in the Pretoria area because what I'm developing is a is a cafe where you'll go in and you'll take pieces of pottery and you'll paint them. That's my target market. And also I want women with children. So I'm, I'm I'm going through the things on Facebook and I'm ticking off there. Women, age group, area, interest in children, interest in activities to do. That's targeting and segmentation. That's spending your money where you should be spending it and not shotgun marketing. Now, if you want to understand who your ideal customer is, your ideal customer is the guy that if you got a picture of them and you photocopy that picture and you ran the photocopy 100 or 200 or 300 times, you would become extremely wealthy. That's how much I want you to understand targeting and segmentation is important. There's also a switch to integration. And integration is understanding that everything has to talk to itself. So right now, in fact, if you have a look at my T-shirt, which says Mike said what, and you go onto my website, you will see that they're slightly different because I have a new logo. So my next step is I actually need to change my T-shirt. So then my T-shirt now matches my new business card, which now matches my my website, which now matches the new slogan I have on my videos, that's integration, getting everything to talk to everything else and not to use one look and feel when I feel like it, and then a completely different look and feel when I feel like it. That's not to say that my marketing won't change according to my market, but the integration will remain there all the time. And the next shift is a shift towards disruption. And this is the one that's probably thrown us all out more than anything else. There's a disruption in kind of everything we do. And the pandemic itself has brought a massive disruption. It's brought a disruption to the way we shop. It's brought a disruption to the fact that I used to do this talk live in front of all of you in the audience, and we'd all laugh and joke and smile and, and interact between us, and someone would put up their hands. And all of a sudden, here we are, we're, we're sitting in a, in a virtual environment. I'm unable to, to see any of you at any one time or all of you. I kind of have to rely on Tracy to let me know if something comes up in the chat so that she can interrupt me. That's a big disruption. We, we're shopping in a completely different way. Even when we go into brick and mortar stores, we're shopping faster. We're going right for the things we want. We're not dawdling as we used to anymore. That we, We're not window shopping. I, I remember just like thinking on a Sunday afternoon, oh, I'll, I'll just go along to, to Eastgate and walk around. We're not doing that. And your clients aren't doing it. They, 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 restaurants are seeing a massive disruption in, in ordering. The fact that most of their orders are now happening online and what's that costing them? So the interesting thing about disruption is that we all love disruption. We love using it, but we hate being disrupted. We'd hate to be the industry that's being disrupted. 
How many of you who never, ever would have got into a taxi cab use Uber or allow your children to use Uber, but you'd never have allowed them to get into a, a metered taxi? That's a massive disruption. Netflix versus your video store. Um, I, I think the lot, one of the last remaining video stores that I know is near opposite Belfort Park. I think there's still a video town there. But even as I've watched that video town, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. There are only a couple of videos there. Now, you, if you want to videos, you need to go into your, your local cash converters or cash crusaders. You can buy second-hand videos if you've still got a video machine. Otherwise, you can stream everything. It's out there. So what about disruption and how do I use it? Disruption is absolutely everywhere. The important thing about disruption is understanding it's about a couple of things. Number one is how can I save my customers time? Time has become an important commodity. Disruption is also about targeting customers. Those guys at Airbnb, at Uber, at Netflix, they know exactly who they're talking to. Their message is so clear and they're able to cover every single need. What they found is they found needs in markets that they weren't in. They, 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 they looked at the taxi industry and they said, what are, the, what are the things that people are really frustrated with? Well, they're frustrated with the fact that it's hard to contact them. I don't know how much it costs before I get in the taxi. I get this rude awakening where I arrive somewhere and suddenly I owe hundreds of rands. At least with these apps, you know. And then also they learned to make money where everyone else wasn't making money. So one of the things you need to look is at yourself, at your own industry. Look at ways you can disrupt yourself. Are there things you could be doing much better? Are there things that you could be doing differently? Can, are you leaving lots of money on the table that you should be taking home with you? And, and then I want you to remember that marketing is only about one thing. Marketing is about perception. People think one thing of us right now, and we want them to think something else. And all we're going to do in a marketing plan is understand how we do that. And one of the things they might be thinking of you right now is that they don't think about you right now because they don't know you exist. That, that's one very interesting marketing channel. Another one is that they know you exist, but they don't know what you do. That's another thing. Or they know what you do, but you don't know what they can do for you. All of those are little channels along the way. So marketing is about perception. I want you to drink my coffee. I want you to contact me. I want you to love my brand. Whatever it is, it's all about the message. How do I get you to, to listen to my message and engage with me? And you should be thinking that all the time. Every single time you put a post on Facebook, you shouldn't just be putting it there for fun. You should be saying to yourself, what am I thinking behind this post? What do my customers think right now? What do I want them to think? Well, they think that coffee is great. I'm going to show them my coffee is better. They think this, I'm going to show them that. That's what it's about. It's about changing our customers' perceptions about us and about our product. And then as small business owners, please remember, appearance is everything. You cannot... When you send a presentation, make sure there aren't spelling mistakes. And by the way, there are often spelling mistakes in my presentation because I'm in a rush. And I know I get frustrated with myself. When I'm suddenly doing something, I go, oh, damn, appearance is actually with two Ps instead of one P. Thank you for all looking as I said that. But I did spell it right. Imper appearance is important. Your website is increasingly important. How you come across on social media, on Facebook, your logo. Take the time and trouble to get things, these things right. So before I move on, just while we've got that, are there any short, sharp questions? Please take yourself off mute. Speak to all of us. Are there any questions about what I've covered so far? Okay, if not, I am going to move on. So what I'm going to cover today are a couple of steps. I'm going to cover your website and your blog. Then I'm going to look at Facebook, I'm going to look at video marketing, and then a couple of other things. I'm not going to go into every single social media platform that there is, from, from Instagram to TikTok, who've now today or yesterday announced that you'll be able to buy on TikTok while you're watching TikTok from Shopify. So you're going to see more and more marketing on TikTok. And I'm looking at my audience. I don't think you're all big TikTok users, but get used to the fact that it's it's a... It's a platform you do need to look at at the moment. So let's talk more. Let's start off with your website and your blog. 
Despite the popularity of Facebook, I need to tell you that your website remains the starting point of where you are. It's going to always be the go-to place. Even if you can convince people on Facebook that they should interact with you, chances are they're going to start doing some research by going into your website. So take the trouble. It's not difficult to build your own website. It's not expensive to do. If you don't want to, get someone else to do it for you. Um, you want, I'll, I'll build a website for you. There's a little bit of marketing. I do build websites up to 10 pages, no e-commerce, but I'll help you with that. Let's get on to that. Okay. The first thing and you I want to do is you want to testify that Mark's great to deal with. Thank you, Charlene. I appreciate it. Your, your, your rebate is on its way. Um, first of all, you want to get your own domain. My clients often phone me and say to me, Mike, please, can you set up a domain for me? I said to them, no, please do it yourself. I want you to own your own domain. I don't want it to be in the hands of your web developer. So if you and your web developer fall out or his business goes bankrupt or God forbid he catches COVID and dies, you can't find your own website. Take the trouble, go to a place like AfriHost, get something with a cPanel and a MySQL database. It's very simple. Pay for it yourself. Don't let anyone else pay for it. You must own and control your own domain. Then go out there and build it. Whether you decide to use Wix or, or Squarespace or whatever, that's entirely up to you. I am a WordPress fan. I'm a very big WordPress fan for a number of reasons. It's very easy to use. There are great plugins and Google loves WordPress. I can tell you right now, it certainly, it, it analyzes it well. It looks into it well. Go and build yourself a WordPress website. It's not hard to do. And then when it comes to design, it's so easy. Try your hand at it yourself. There are a number of, of, of um, themes out there, some that you can pay for, some that you don't. But it is important that you have a really good website, somewhere where people can go and look and see things. Call in a web designer if you need to. So let's once you've decided, let's talk about some essentials when it comes to web design. There are a few things. Number one, you want some nice kind of banner at the top, something that, that draws people's attention to you. Always on the top left-hand side is your logo. That's great. Make sure, number two, you have some kind of secondary headlines. Usually they're underneath, a little bit about the services that you offer, things that you do for people. Have that there. Number three, your content. Take the trouble to write nice content. Write your content from the point of view of the customer. What does the customer want to hear? What does the customer want to see? This is not the place to write pages and pages of what you do. It's about where you're going to write what you do for people. By the time they've walked away from dealing with you, what are they going to get out of the experience? That's probably the most important thing. Ask yourself all the time, what's in it for me? I'm a customer. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Number four, testimonials. I cannot stress how important it is to have testimonials on your pages. I know that earlier on I said honesty and transparency, but if you need to, please get a couple of friends to write you referrals, to write you testimonials, but get some testimonials up. People buy from people that they can look and they go, oh, I know that person. I know who they dealt with. That's at number four. Number five, have calls to action. The real, the thing that I want to tell you most about your website is you actually want people on your website as little as possible. But not because they've gone to someone else's website, because they found what they wanted and they've contacted you. That's when you've done a really good job. When you're watching, when you're page tracking what happens and guys are going from your homepage to your contact page, they're then phoning you and you're doing business with them, you have the world's best website. That is a lot better than a website that has got pages and pages and pages of stuff and videos and pictures and everything else and nobody ever phones you. If you're not getting calls because of your website, go back and look at your website. That's where the problem lies. Number six, a, a click button. Make it very easy. Make the navigation easy. Don't make them jump through hoops. Get rid of anything that slows your website down. Like in the old days, I don't know if you guys remember in, in the 2000s, there was flash. And, and, and stuff would happen and a little wheel would turn while you waited and waited and waited. It, it was like going into a barn, asking the barman for directions to the bathroom. And what he did was he started doing some bottle flare and changing stuff around. And when he finished his whole show, he said to you, well, actually, I don't know. Please go and ask the guy next to me. 
and he did the same thing. So it's all about being really quick and being fast. So that's number seven. Number eight, use great pictures. Uh, you know me, I, I love Canva. They're outstanding images on Canva. They're all, you've, you've paid for them once you're using Canva or they're free to use. Don't go onto Google. Don't search for images on Google and steal other people's pictures, especially those ones with the, with the, the X in the background or the one, two, three RF. Guys, that, that just spells cheap and nasty and out of focus and you, you're just going to annoy your customers. And then number nine, please make sure that you're building responsive websites. One of the things that your web stats will show you if you decide to follow your web stats is they'll show you how many people are coming to your website on a desktop or on a phone. Now, we need to understand that most of the time, let, let me clear this up for you. You need to have it responsive. Most people will go to your desk, will, will look for you on a, on a phone. In other words, they'll want your contact details and a few little things. But when they want to find out more about you, they're going to read about you on the desktop. That's why the desktop one is so important, because that's where they're going to do their research. On the mobile one, what you want is your phone number and your contact details to be really fast and easy to contact. So that's kind of your website. The next thing you want to do is you really want to have on your website, you do want to have some kind of blog. Now, I nag my clients to do blogs all the time. They, they, they promise me they will. They promise me they'll do writing. They promise me they'll write articles, and then they don't. Whether you do them in the form of writing, as I do on my own website, I actually, on my new website, I now have writing and video. I'm finding that my video blogging or vlogging, so to speak, is getting an incredible amount of hits. And I'm also getting a lot of response from those. So look at ways to get customers to interact with you. Um, I do try and post a video every couple of weeks and an article every now, now and again. As I say, whether you're using video or articles, the one thing it does is it keeps your website fresh. It means that every time Google sends out these little spiders in the morning, they will find fresh content on your website every now and again. And once they find fresh content and they see that other people are going there, that's what that's how Google does the ranking. Now, I'm, I'm not sure who, who's watching or whatever. Search engine optimization. Uh, to me, the jury's still out there. Uh, the guys that swear by it. For me, I think fresh content, especially for new sites and new people, beat search engine optimization. That's not to say you should ignore it. You need to understand what keywords are, have them in your writing, understand what people are for are searching for, that's also very important. So as I say, on my own blog, I use my writing in my video. On my little dude food one, I use my, my videos. So please take the trouble, if you have a website already, to go and go and look at it again. Look at that website, see how you can improve it, see what things are missing, try your own navigation, how easy is it to contact you, can I find your phone number, because that's really what I want, I want your phone number, is there maybe a little button on it that I can just click on, a kind of one-click WhatsApp or a one-click phone call, those things are becoming very important as you go along. So before I move on to the social media side, once again, I will open it to questions, I know there, there are seldom any at the moment, but let's talk about... Uh, any web or blog related questions you might have, you can save them all for later as well. My Kaza, just a question. What if you are running a service and it's very hard to do a vlog on a particular service? What do you do then? So let me ask you, what is your service? Uh, I'll tell you in two hours as I was saying, oh, okay. but say for instance, uh, say you are starting, okay, say you're starting a new coffee shop a block away from Tash's. Right. What are you going to do as a vlog or as a message to them that's different? In other words, there's coffee, there's uh, baristas, there's the smell of coffee. What are you going to actually use as a differentiating strategy? Okay, so first of all, David, I need to tell you, just by the fact that you're going to do something is going to put you apart from everyone else because they all did it on day one and then they stopped. So most people, if you go look at their blogs or vlogs and you look at the date, you'll see that they last posted about 18 months ago. So if you can commit to doing something consistent, you're already doing more than your competition. So the second thing is you, you need you, to... Basically, you then on the go, you don't stop. If you're no, in this you market, and right. that's one of your strategies, you are on the go. 
on the go. Or, and I'll talk about that a bit later on. Regular, regular, regular. You have to be on the go. So now you're going to try and put yourself in the mind of your customer. You're going to say, what would my customers like to see? Well, maybe I'd like to know what was the, actually the origin of a cappuccino? Who, who, who came up with it? Maybe there's a bit of history. Maybe you can tell me a funny story about coffee that I didn't know. Did you know that coffee actually, when, when coffee beans are first harvested, they green. Then they become, you know, tell me something, amuse me. Be my, be my go-to okay. guy. Be my authority on coffee. Don't even, in your blog and your vlog, you don't even have to sell me. Um, Charlene, be, be the authority on hearing aids. Tell me, what's this ringing I'm hearing in my ears? You know, what, what can I do about it? You don't, have, you don't have to sell anything in that blog or vlog. You just have to make me believe that you're an authority on the subject. Uh, Mike, sorry to interrupt yes. you there. Is no that, problem. Would, not that, would that not be the juice, the, uh, um, would you, uh, the, the point of having uh, somebody, what they call, uh, 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 like a content writer? In, uh, yeah, absolutely. In that kind of stuff. Because if you're a businessman and you're running your own, uh, your business, you haven't got the time to actually sit down and do all that kind of blogging, all that content writing, where somebody is specialized in that and knows what to write and has got the knowledge and expertise in it, or you give, the ba give them the basic info and tell them to do something on it, they, they run with it. Philip, 100%. And please, God, we should all be so busy that we haven't got the time for this. But unfortunately, most of us right now, we have got the time, we just don't want to use it. But I agree with you. So what do I do? I sometimes go to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. That's kind of my go-to uh, crowdsourcing, not, not crowdfunding, it's different. That's where I go for, for crowdsourcing. If I want to put something out there, if I'm looking for a content writer, there are lots of people probably on ought who are looking to do work, who are very good at English, very good at writing, who could put themselves out there as content creators. Then someone like David would contact them and say, listen, I want an article every Monday from you. I want an article every Monday. On Monday one, I want to know the origin of cappuccino. Monday number two, I want to know how, I want an article on how coffee's harvested. On number three, I wanted it on how it's roasted. On In week four, and then he would pay them to write the articles. He will get them. He'll reword them for himself. He'll find the images or he'll create a video around it. But Philip, you're 100% right. We don't have to create this content ourselves. There's so many people out there that'll help you make it who are making a living doing it. They are, because I know somebody in Israel who's actually doing it. <laughs> 100%. Share it. Share it in the chat. I'm telling you now. I love marketing no, small no, businesses. No, I actually don't know the email address. I just happen to know of the person doing it. And I'm pretty sure that there are guys on this platform that will do it for you too. Mark, can I, sorry, can I ask you, is it better to write something not so well or nothing at all? Because okay, so I had here's... experience yesterday. Um, I, I did some research and I found an article that my Zayda had written in Bahrain. Now, my Zayda certainly didn't have a, a master's in English, but he wrote something and I shared it with the whole family and they all just loved it. It made me think, why do we have to be such perfectionists? Maybe. Okay, here's, here's, here's today. The saying for today is good and fast beats slow and great. Okay, good enough is good enough. This nonsense of sitting back and rereading and reworking our own videos and our own blogs until they're absolutely perfect and they're completely over the head of our target audience who really just want the information in the most fun way when it's relevant. So the fact that it came from your Zayda is what gives it its own relevance. It gives it its own authority. By telling people who wrote it, they're not expecting to read a piece of literary greatness, but they're going to hear, they're going to get insight and knowledge that they couldn't get anywhere else. Be that person. Be the person who shares your knowledge and your insight with people all the time. Stop worrying about whether you make a fool of yourself. I make a fool of myself enough times a day that it doesn't even worry me anymore. But really, it does. Wouldn't that make a difference on the type of industry you're in, Mike? Somebody in, like if you're uh, like you, you, your, your, your business, let's say this is what you do. You're a professional speaker. This uh, on, on, um, 
social media and, and those sort of things. Uh, you might get a lawyer who's who who's, who's, who hasn't who can't have that kind of flipsy, flimsy. Yes, 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 yes. Philip, I agree with you 100%. So in other words, if I'm an accountant, I might be able to put things across in a fun way, but the information that I put across needs to be critically correct. Correct. And, and an attorney might need to get a content writer who understands the law. Sure. So please, I'm not, not for one second and am I, am I saying dismiss the content or, or write rubbish. I'm not. Mm. But we're no, so... I'm, happy I'm just thinking. questioning... Yeah. yeah, no, you're right, but you're, you're you're spot on. Be aware of who you're talking to, who's your target market, what language are they expecting to hear? And by language, I mean level of language, not 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 English Afrikaans or whatever. You're so right. You're, you're right. And Nando's Nando's can crude words into it. Yes, Nando's can be flippant and irreverent, and other people can't. We can't no. all be Nando's. No, absolutely. But that's not what I'm pitching. All I'm saying is we're all hung up in getting it absolutely perfect. Thank you. I, I look at some of my videos and I go, shit, Mike, the lighting, excuse my language, the lighting wasn't 100%. I think, well, you know what? That video is relevant today. It's not going to be relevant tomorrow. That speech was made today. I need to get that out. People will forgive the fact that my lighting wasn't perfect because my message was good. Thank you. So concentrate on that. Okay, moving on. Mark, I have a question from Shana. She yeah. said, um, how long should a blog be? And is once a week good enough to blog? Okay, so please please excuse the crudity of what I'm going to say. Because it is a little bit crude, but this is to tell you exactly how long a blog should be. Someone once said that the average blog should be able to read, be read by the average person during the average crap. Okay. The amount of time it takes you to sit on the toilet, that's how long you should be able to read a blog. So it's about two to three minutes. It's a couple of hundred words. If you thank you for that smiley face there, Tracy, and forgive me, everyone else, for the crudity, but that's really what you're writing for. You're writing for an on the go, someone that can read something while they're sitting in a coffee shop waiting for someone who's running a few minutes late. They can go back to your website for the rest of the stuff, keep them short keep them fun. My videos, I try and keep them under three and a half minutes, preferably even down to about 90 seconds, but about three and a half minutes if they're entertaining will get you through a video. So let, let me carry on if you, if you don't mind. At Mug and Bean, we had a simple saying, which was turning regulars into customers, sorry, customers into regulars and regulars into friends. It was, it was kind of a pathway that we wanted to take people on. And understanding that pathway, that journey, is what I want to do with you right now. I want you to understand that right now, there are a whole lot of strangers out there. People that have never heard of you, never seen you, have got absolutely no idea what you do. And we want to make those strangers visitors. That's the first step. Whether they're visitors to your website or visitors to your brick and mortar store or visitors to your online store or visitors to your blog or visit to your Facebook page, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the bottom line is, how do we take strangers and turn them into some kind of visitors? And the way we do that is by writing really good blogs, by using good keywords so that when they do their searches, you come up, by using social publishing. In other words, um, putting our stuff regularly across different platforms. And of course, spending some money on paid promotions. Every now and again, I look at one of my articles, I look at something and I think, well, if I could get that in the right hands, this could generate income for me. It's very different to just sharing knowledge. Every now and again, I do understand that what I do needs to generate money. Otherwise, I, 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 how am I going to pay for these four screens I've got in front of me and my new computer and my lighting? That, that's what I'm in it for. And so are all of you. So then what I'll do is I'll actually spend some money on paid promotions. I'll go into Facebook and I'll boost the post. I'll get it in front of more people. So number two, once we've turned them into visitors, we now actually want to turn them into leads. It's, it's one thing that they're coming to our website. It's one thing that they're walking past our front door. It's one thing they're looking in our window. How do I make them now potential customers? Not quite yet customers, but potential customers. And the way I do that is by using really good calls to action. Uh, you can use different landing pages. You can use forms. You can ask them questions as you start an interaction with them. Uh, you can have little surveys. You can make special offers. 
so that once they've at least got to the front page, there's an offer that entices them. So in other words, give me your email address and I'll send you a regular video. Or how would you like to, uh, I mean, I, I want to write a book that says um, how not to get ripped off on the internet. And if you guys all send me 99 Rand, I'll send you my book. So I'm sure you got that. Well, I'm hoping you did at least before you send me the 99 Rand. Um, that's make an offer interact with the people because now we've got these visitors and we want to engage with them. That would possibly be the word. From leads, we want to turn them into customers. That's the next step. How do I do that? Well, from three to four, that's when you use customer relationship management. I use emails. I use workflow. I understand the process that I want to take them through. I, um, I, try, and, I try and mail them regularly. Just something. Keep them informed. That's that's how leads suddenly become customers. When you get there, get a chance to see and experience your offering. And then very, very important. Sorry, once, once I've got them from, from, sorry, from customers, I now want to move them from customers to promoters. That's another hugely important part of all of this. Now, sitting in front of me, there are people with phones. You either, you probably have an iPhone or a Samsung. That's most of you. A small amount will have a Hawaii. I see that's kind of dying off at the moment, but I'm sitting in front of a whole lot of Samsung and iPhone users. And if I were to ask you guys, I'm buying a new phone, what should I buy? All the iPhone users are going to tell me stick with iPhone and all the Samsung users are going to tell me to buy Samsung. And none of you are paid commission, but you're only too happy to promote those two companies for me. You can tell me exactly what the pros and cons are, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, how much the apps cost, what the phone is, how much data it uses. Wonderful. Love it. You are promoters. I want all of you to become promoters of me. I want you to, the next time you're talking to someone and the word social media comes up, you, I want you to say, gee, I saw this guy, Mike said, wow, you've got to get hold of him. Oh, go to his website. Mike said what? That's it. That's what I really, I don't just want you as customers. I want you as promoters. And that's what you want from the people around you. And the way you do that is through surve surveys. So you ask them questions. You share stuff with them. You find out what they want. Uh, you, you content, you, you, social monitoring is a big thing. You watch what they're saying. You watch the kind of things that they react to. You look at when, when some guy, that's, that's the one nice thing about Twitter is you can follow your competition on Twitter. That's a, if you're going to be on Twitter, go follow your competition. If you're starting a coffee business, go follow Tasha's, go follow um, Seattle, go, go see what customers are saying to them. Listen to complaints they have and make sure you don't do the same thing. Look for the compliments on certain products so you can copy those products. That's how you use social media for research. So all of this, this is the customer journey from stranger to visitor, visitor to leads, leads to customers and customer to promoter. Once you got to promoters, you don't even have to sell them anything anymore. All they're doing is waiting for you to bring out a new product. God, I love Apple. They're the, they're the, this is a company that gets people to buy products that they don't need because they want them. They just put a new number on the same product. They put an S after the phone and people are trading in their phones for the S. It does nothing, but it's just genius. Believe me, absolutely sheer genius. So it's all about lead generation. And that's what you want right now. You're small business owners and you want leads. How do you get leads? First of all, email marketing is a great way to get leads. Run it properly. I know that Nadine Hochter does a course on Ort on um, uh, MailChimp. If, if she's Tracy, please put a link to it or, or let people know, learn how to use email marketing property properly. Nadine is great. I, I love engaging with her as well. Get on her course, do some email marketing. Blog regularly. Whatever regular is to you, whether it's once a week or once a month or whatever, but get people used to the idea that you are going to create new content every now and again. There will be something fresh coming from you and don't tire of it. If you're not getting a response, it's not your audience's fault. It's because you are writing shit to them. I'm sorry. I do that myself. I get it wrong sometimes. I take all this trouble to write a blog that I'm absolutely convinced that the market's going to love and I get no response. And I, I, I want to tear my head. I want to like reach into the actual audience, pull them in and say, why aren't you listening? But it's not their fault. It's mine. I wrote rubbish. I timed it wrong. 
I, believe me, I, I make the reason I write some really good blogs is because I write a, a lot of bad ones as well. Stuff that never sees the light today. So do it. Blog regularly. Be consistent on social media. It's not just about doing it once. Be consistent. Be the go-to person on a particular thing. I, I love the fact that if I go off social media for a week or so, I decide to take a little break, I'll get private messages on Facebook asking me if I'm okay. Oh, you're right. Where have you been? Oh, you've been so quiet. Is everything all right? It's just, it means that when I am there, my presence is noticed for whatever reason, even if it's because um, I'm, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm an insane. Whatever the reason is, it, it's, it's got to be something. And then take the time to design great offers, great offers to your customers, not what you think is a great offer. Ask around. Does it really matter? You know, we're, we're living in a really strange world right now where the word relevance, to be relevant in someone's life is extremely important. So many businesses are suddenly discovering that they're not relevant. They thought they were. We all thought we were relevant. And all of a sudden we're realizing, what the heck? We are not relevant. That's why people aren't coming to us. Um, stores are learning it. Gyms are certainly learning it at the moment that they're not as relevant in people's lives as they thought they were, that people are able to train at home, that a walk outside doesn't cost me 750 rand a month, and I don't have to sign a document for 19 years in order to exercise. You're going to see changes in those platforms all the time. So design great offers for your customers. Use success stories. Tell people about what you do. Show examples of how you've helped turn businesses around. It's part of those... those um, references and testimonials, but it's a little bit more than that. Show them the success you've had and the difference you've made in people's lives. You can also use landing pages, calls to action. Landing pages are basically one-page websites. So I have my whole website. Now, let's say I'm doing something particularly on social media. I might have a landing page just on the word social media that takes you there in the hope that you'll sign up for a particular offer and then refers you to my website. They're not for everyone, and they sometimes are completely overrated and oversold. So take the trouble to rather work on your own website. And then, as I'm going to tell you, and we've, this has come up a few times, keep on keeping on. Just keep doing it. Pegging away, little bit by little bit. Don't stop. If you're not getting a response to what you want, don't worry so much about your audience being stupid or not understanding you, go back and rewriting it in a way that they will understand you. Because that's the one thing you really don't want to lose. So lead generation is becoming more and more important. And lead generation, obviously, some people think, oh, no, that's just a phone call and I've got to make sales calls. It's got nothing to do with that. It's about inbound marketing, getting people to contact you through the creation that you are putting out there. So because we've got such a great interactive group, once again, any questions on lead generation before I move on to Facebook, which is our next, our next topic. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead because I can see I'm running a little bit late. So I'm going to have to speed things up through Facebook. So in Facebook, first of all, you, you need a business page. And I am a very poor example because my business page is actually my social page. I have combined my my myself and my business into one thing. This is not something I recommend for everyone. Most of the time you want to create a personal page and a business page and just understand that the two of them are linked together. It's worth the effort. Great Facebook pages create great leads and great businesses. And it's also a great way to target and to target your market. It, it, it's, it's incredible. So while we're on Facebook, here are face, six Facebook essentials for you to follow. First of all, create a business page and not a personal page. It's worth the effort. Secondly, add a great cover image, even if you have to buy it or use Canva, or whatever. Go to the trouble. Make sure you have a great cover image. Make sure that cover image works. Anyone who's struggling with their cover image and doesn't understand that the cover image looks completely different on the computer to on the iPad to on the phone, get hold of me. I'll send you some measurements for you to work on where to leave gaps, where to put the words. So you don't have all the words there and everything's missing or half your pictures cut out. It's a very, very important part of your, of your Facebook page. So add a great cover image. 
add a recognizable profile picture, whether it's an avatar or, or a photograph of yourself, take the trouble, or it's your company logo. Make sure it fits in there, take the trouble, put it out there. When you're building your Facebook stuff, prioritize quality over quantity. It's no use posting a lot of rubbish all the time. Take the trouble to say to yourself, I'm going to put out one post a week, but it's going to be worth everyone's while. It's better than this, you know, one thing that's sorry, and, and if there are any um, network marketers in the audience, I apologize. But the one thing that I know about my friends and any one of them has joined any form of network marketing that I am going to be flooded. In the first two weeks, I'm going to be flooded with inspirational quotes. Anything by Robert Kiyosaki or, or anyone or, or, or what's his name, Warren Buffett, that's what I'm going to get for two weeks. I'm going to get the same quotes that I've seen on everyone else's walls. The next two weeks, I'm just going to hear about the product, how wonderful it is. I'm going to watch videos of them making themselves smoothies. Uh, what, what, it, it's like it's, it's predictable. It's like I know they've been captured and I kind of have to press that button that says snooze for 30 days, hide this person for 30 days. That's not content. Content is where they take the trouble to, to share a great recipe with me, not trying to sell me anything. That's what it's about. So post quality over quantity any day of the week. Post your most compelling visual content. Visual content is incredible. Great videos, great photographs, something you've done. Uh, another thing that amazes me is when someone posts 24 pictures of the same thing from different angles in bad light. I didn't even like the first picture. There's apps. When I see there plus 27, six photographs and plus 27, I know it's time to move on. I really, I don't want to, I don't want to even risk clicking on it. What you really want to do is find one or two really good visual images. That's how you capture people's attention on Facebook. And then post and promote video content wherever possible. It is really, it's, it's a, it's such an amazing way to engage with people. I find that my, my video content gets so much more sharing and so many more views besides my, my, some of my crazy memes. But if I want to get something done, video content really works for me really well. And I'll get onto that a little bit later on. Here's just an example of one of my clients and how they set up their pages. Those are all different branches. You'll find that each one of them has more or less the same look and feel. They're using the same, the logo appears throughout, the same kind of imagery. That's just how you create um, great content and, and a great look and feel while you're on Facebook. And it really is worth the trouble. I'm going to skip questions on that because we're getting a little bit behind at the moment. YouTube and video creation. The day I learned to love YouTube more than anything else was the day I made a small little video called the Class of 99 Wear Sunscreen. That video sitting at the moment, I think at about three and a half million or, or 2.9 million views. Unfortunately, I couldn't monetize it because it wasn't for me, but that was the day I realized the power of YouTube. So I'm, I'm not going to run through everything on this because I do do a whole video course just on that through Oort. You need to use your camera or your phone. That's good enough. You don't have to buy a camera. Go onto internet, study the techniques, learn about it, learn what people are doing, understand lighting, use a tripod wherever possible, don't hold the phone in front of you, learn to shoot in, in sorry, excuse me, bumping the microphone, learn to shoot in, in landscape if that's the platform you want to use, or to shoot in portrait, for example, when is it appropriate to shoot in portrait? Well, if I'm going onto stories, I'm going onto Instagram, and that's where it'll be, that's when I shoot that one, and if necessary, shoot both. Improve your editing. I, I do courses on this. You can edit on your phone. You can edit on your iPad. Uh, they're great things. Um, my favorite one, I can't remember it right now. It's, it's a VLLO. Just go to VLLO, download the app. It's available on all platforms. Great for video editing. Wherever possible, improve the sound. Buy yourself a little microphone. And then most importantly, as with everything else, practice, practice, practice. Make a couple of videos. The first one's going to be terrible. You're going to hate what you look like. You're going to hate your first video. Your second one, you'll hate it a little bit less. And so it'll get better and better and better. So in a nutshell, five ways to improve your video. Purchase yourself a decent microphone. Use things like Filmic Pro or, or they're, they're, they're great little apps for filming with it. Buy yourself a video stock subscription if that works for you or use the sub stock subscription that's there. That's a nice way to, to like, let's say, for example, I want to make a video on, on, 
on my coffee shop, but I haven't got the high quality equipment to film a slow motion drip as the coffee falls out of the, um, out of the head of, of, of the machine. No problem, I can find that on the internet. I can buy that, that little piece of stock footage. I can add it to mine. Nobody knows that it wasn't me shooting it. If I want to show beans going around in a rotisserie, uh, sorry, as they're being roasting, uh, all that kind of stuff is there. Once again, spend a couple of rand on a tripod and learn, 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 learn more than anything else. So in a nutshell, Facebook, your blog, your videos, do those things, you're already way ahead of the pack. So now let's talk about why some things work and some things don't. And that's probably the most important thing to you right now. First of all, in order for something to work, it needs to have social currency. It needs to be important to people around you. It doesn't have to have all these steps, but just watch them as they go along. Next of all, you need to try and work in some kind of trigger, some way to get them to remember things in their day-to-day -day life. And a really great example of that is KitKat, whose sales were falling until they came up with a simple slogan, which was KitKat and coffee. That was it. That's the slogan, KitKat and coffee. And after they launched the KitKat and coffee um, slogan, their sales jumped by about 40% in the UK. Because people, every time they picked up a coffee, started associating the word Kit Kat with coffee. So where you can find a little trigger, where you can get people to memorize your company name or think about you at a particular time of day or think about you while they're doing a particular chore or thing, that's it. At, at Mug and Bean, we had a simple slogan. It was meet me at the mug. That was the slogan, meet me at the mug. So every time you had a meeting and someone said, where should we meet? You go, oh, we'll go to Greenstone. Oh, where should we meet? Meet me at the mug. We got people to associate the fact that they were having a meeting with the mug and bean at that particular time. So we're looking for that. Another important thing is emotion. Are you able to trigger people's emotion? And let me tell you something, whether that emotion is anger or despair, it actually doesn't really matter. You're getting, as long as you can trigger an emotion. Of course, if your product is, um, baby blankets or something like that. The, the, the emotions you want to trigger are joy and family and, and good times. And But try and make sure that you're at least triggering a, triggering a promotion. The next thing is, what, what's everyone else doing about your thing? Have you, have you hit on something that the public are interested in at the moment? These, these little steps along the way, and you, you're not going to get them all right. But you need to be aware of them as you start publishing um, your content. And the closer, the more of these you can tick off, the more chance you've got of getting it right. And another very important one is, does it offer practical value? Uh, YouTube is, to me, the most incredible university. It just It's amazing. And there's so much practical value sitting there on YouTube. Um, when I work with guys, let's say you've got a plumbing business. I'm encouraging plumbers to start a little series on how to change a washer on your own or how to switch off the mains when you're having a burst pipe. Become the authority. Become someone that people can rely on. Become a kind of go-to person. I mean, I'll, I'll joke. I've actually created a little sticker that, that I send out. And you, you can create your own stickers, by the way. There are apps for that as well. And my little sticker says, just ask Mike. And I love the fact that I'm kind of the go-to place for people when they have a technical issue. If they can't get a video to load or they need to resize something or they need to find something. A lot of the time, I simply open Google and answer the question for them as though I knew it all along. And no, it's not a waste of time to me. It's a very important part of who I am. I want people to rely on me for that information because when they need something done, that's a paid thing. I will become that go-to person or please God, I will become that go-to person. And that's what it's all about. So can you offer practical advice in what you're doing? Can you make people's lives be better? And then finally, the S in steps is something called stories. Can you tell stories with what you do? People love to hear stories. So Charlene, your little thing about your, your grandfather's writing, whatever, part of that is the story behind it and then what he wrote. So can you tell me a story? They, they say that when people walked into Ray Kroc's office, Ray Kroc didn't say to them, I want to sell you a franchise. He said to them, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you the history of my company. Make it into a story. Can you get it across? Now, these six steps, I didn't invent them myself. They come from an incredible book called Contagious by Jonah Berger. 
And if you get a chance, go to Amazon or, or um, audible.com, download it, listen in your, in your car. I'm a very big fan of Audible. Audible is an incredible, once again, an amazing thing to be able to drive in my car, listen to a book. If I lose concentration, I can just rewind and go back. That's contagious for you. I have my own perfect formula for social media, and I found that this has worked for me every single time. Be regular. This is not a number. It's a kind of state of mind. And, um, there isn't a right or wrong answer. People always say to me, how many times should I post on Facebook? I don't know yet. You're going to pick that up yourself. You're going to pick up from your interactions, whether it's once a day or once a week. And the different platforms have different things. Instagram, it is important to be very regular. It's a fresh content coming up on Instagram almost on a daily basis, at least one picture, maybe once a week a reels or, or a video. Um, so regular. Is the content relevant? Is it relevant to that particular moment? Every single time I've created something that's gone viral, it's about the relevance that amazes me, that I was able to time that particular meme or that particular message with what was happening at that particular moment is what, what stands out for me. Then the, the third R is, is it remarkable? And the word remarkable is made up of two words, able to remark. Am I creating the kind of content that people are able to remark about? Another thing I do with my content is I, I, I love the likes and I love the comments. But what I look at more than anything else is the shares. If, if something I've produced has a high share value, that shows me that people wanted to, that, that to me is the most important thing. To me, that separates the ordinary from the remarkable. And then finally, real. It's, and this is where it becomes very difficult because a lot of the time we don't want to create our own content. We want to get someone to do the content for us. And when you do that, you very often lose the real. I would rather have you stand up there and fumble just a little bit through your words than you pay an actor who everybody knows is an actor because they're absolutely perfect. And that's where the choice between using your own words and a voiceover might be important. You, and it might change. You might actually start the video with an introduction by yourself, even if you fumble and you don't look exactly perfect in front of the camera, and then switch over to a voiceover who finishes the long read for you because that's what they're good at. And you're not really good at that. So really, regular, relevant, remarkable, and real are what separate great content and great stuff from everything else. And then people come to me and they say to me, but Mike, I'm not seeing any of this on my page. I can tell you why. And I, let me just see if I can share this with you, first of all. This is a little video that I made just at the, at the start of lockdown. If you and the movement of people will be lifted, alcohol will be sold for home consumption. Okay, so it's not a very well-made video. Fumbled through it, got it done. But the nice thing about it, that this video went incredibly viral. Within a couple of hours, it had 161,000 views. And that was on my own page. And on other pages, like this guy, I can't see how many are there. Another 2.4 thousand shares, another, another, another 116,000 views. It was absolutely remarkable. And the nice thing was, there was my logo at the top. And I had business inquiries from people asking me if I can make short videos for them, if I can make their memes for them. That, that's that's what content and when did I do it I did it about 15 minutes after Cyril announced the lifting of the of the alcohol ban so it was about relevance another one of my favorite completely viral videos was this one about the world cup about soccer players that had about 31,000 shares also the nice thing about it is I made that video about 10 minutes after someone had gone down in a tackle was rolling on the ground so look for things that are happening today. Look for things that are relevant in people's lives and then re and use them. And basically, there are five reasons why you're not getting traction on your social media. And I'm going to admit it right now. I get this wrong a lot of my, the time myself. I forget about it. For example, I go into something with no strategy. You have to have a strategy behind what you're doing. You have to ask the question, what outcome do I want? If that outcome is I want people to laugh, Fantastic. If that was your outcome, you've achieved it. Go for it. There's no reason to have another outcome. Another outcome might be, I want people to go to my website. Then you'll track the number of people that go and you'll know 
pretty quickly whether you had success or not. Have an understanding, a strategy, have an outcome for almost everything that you want, even if that outcome is fun. That, there's no problem with that at all. The next reason is that you actually are posting boring content. Every now and again, I post something and I just get two likes and I think to myself, hell, Mark, go back and look at it. That actually wasn't good at all. That was just, it was just poorly executed, poorly done. I know in your own mind, you knew what you thought you were doing, but you actually didn't. Go back, redo it, do it again. Another reason why content isn't shared is that there's very poor imagery or video or poor quality sound. People will even watch a video. They'll watch a poor video if the sound is good, but they will not keep watching your video if the sound is poor. That's a very, very important thing of it. And another reason why you're not getting any traction is that you're actually offering no value to your customers. You think what you're putting out there is important and actually it's bordering on irrelevant. And, and that's a very, very tough place to be. And it's, and it's hard to, to understand that. And then finally, the fifth reason why stuff isn't getting traction is you have an undefined target market. You're not talking to people particularly. You don't even understand in your own mind who your customer base is. I know it's hard to hear. And it's, it's like one of those, like, I didn't sign up to be spoken to so badly, but I'm sorry, I get it wrong myself. If I hadn't made this mistake so many times myself, I, I wouldn't be standing here to tell you about it understand who your target market is. Speak to them in a language that they understand. Use a platform that they understand. If I'm marketing to Sasha, who's now 18 years old, I can't even believe it. If I'm now marketing to Sasha and her friends, there's absolutely no reason for me to post anything on Facebook because Facebook is for old people and boomers like myself. If I want to speak to her, I have to be on Insta. It's not even Instagram. I have to be on Insta or I must be on TikTok. I've got to use a platform that they understand. Or I've got to create a small little video that they will all share on YouTube and, sorry, not on YouTube, on WhatsApp. It's about understanding who my target market is and what platform they're using. For most of us, Facebook is a phenomenal platform. Most of us have a big enough user base on Facebook that it's worth dedicating the time and effort to. But please make sure that that's what it is. So, in a nutshell, here's social media for you. Social media is not optional. You have to be doing it. Your target market is using it. Everyone else is. Social media is not difficult. Get this out of your head. You can do it. You can do one thing. You can start with something. You can, I, and, I, and really, I have, to, I have to give compliments to Charlene, who, who watched one of my videos, who watched one of my courses on video editing and went out and made her own video. She might not love it. I know sometimes she doesn't love it. She looks at her own video and then she wants me to, to tear it to pieces and tell her how terrible it is. I'm just amazed that she went and did it. This is a lady who was scared of her, sorry, Charlene, she was scared of her own cell phone. And now she's making her own videos. To me, that's, that's a huge step up. That's someone who said, you know what? I am going to take the step. I'm going to try. And I know that her next video, the one after whatever, they'll just get better and better. Social media is not as difficult as you think it is. Social media is not free. It costs you time and effort. And that alone has a value to it. So don't, don't this thing about, oh, it's just free. It's not. And you are going to want to pay for good images and pay for good programs. And maybe you want to pay for a Canva subscription. And maybe you want to buy some music, some royalty-free music. Put some money aside. That's it. I also, I need, sorry, just go back one. Please, once you post it, it's out there. Please be careful what you post. There are horror stories at the moment. Guy, some guy at the Olympic Games who posted something 12, 13 years ago that was insensitive. You know, my, Sasha's, for me, she's very tech savvy. And she always says to me, Dad, what if I post a picture of myself sitting on a chair and 10 years ago, somebody finds out that it's actually cruelty to chairs to be sitting on them and some hashtag uh, chairs lives matter goes around. And then they find this post of me sitting on a chair 10 years ago when it wasn't deemed as being a bad thing. So another thing that I've learned to do, particularly with my Twitter account, is every couple of months I go in there and I raise everything. I just clear out my Twitter account because something that was funny seven or eight years ago is suddenly offensive to half the population. It's, it's kind of one of the things we deal with. So please be careful. Once you post it, it is out there. <clears throat> Listen first and sell second. 
look, go, go to your friends' pages, look what's getting them down. There's, there's a very famous story about a guy who complained, I think, to BMW about his car in the United Kingdom. They just, they, they wouldn't service it. They wouldn't look after it. The next day he got a call from Jaguar asking if he'd like to test drive a car because they got a special offer from him, for him. Where did they find out he was upset about his car? By watching him. You see someone complaining about something that you can offer a better service. No problem. You just say to them, someone's complaining about the fact that they're hearing, they, 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 they're drinking lousy coffee. Uh, they can't find a decent printer. I'm, I'm not sure everyone who's in front of me. Each one of you offer a service. Go and find out what you can do better than everyone else. Watch your customers. Listen first. And then sell, sell, sell. That's what this is about. Social media is about, in the end, creating business and, and a success. And then finally, success is not guaranteed. I know that. But insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You have to change something somewhere. You have to start today with one little thing. I really don't mind what it is. Go and do one little thing differently. I'm going to skip the questions. Right now, I just want to know, did I succeed? Was I able to introduce you to social media? Did I calm you a little bit, even if I got you a bit excited? Did I make you believe that you could do something that maybe you never thought was possible? You can, you can go create a meme, go make an image, go try your first video like Charlene did. Um, did I inform you? Have I given you just a little bit of information that you can use to take with you? And most importantly, did I inspire you? Was I able to get you to at least decide that you are going to do something differently? Even if that something is to attend the Dean's course on ought on MailChimp. I don't mind what it is, as long as I've inspired you to do something. Once again, those of you that want to get hold of me, there's everything. Only too happy to share. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, I'm on YouTube. You can WhatsApp me anytime. You can pick up the phone and phone me. Please don't voicemail me. But otherwise, I'm very happy to connect with all of you. I know I have run over my time. I apologize. About half an hour. I hope I haven't wasted your time. I'm going to open it to any questions. I'm not going anywhere for a while. So, Tracy, I see you've now become the ought sticker, I think. Oh, no, there you are. There's Tracy. Thank you, everyone, again, for giving up your time. I uh, hope I have inspired you. So, Mark, before we end, um, let's open up. Are there any questions? I see incredible comments in the chat box. Um, does anyone have questions for Mark? I have a question. Yes, sir. What happens if your target market is aged between 90 and 100? How do they access your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or WhatsApp? They probably don't, but their grandchildren and their children do. <laughs> and they will share that information if it's relevant. If they see something on Facebook that's relevant to your target market, even if that target market themselves are not, they will take that information. Not only will they share it, they will use it and they will buy into it. Thank you. That's so, Mark, I'd like to just say no, that... Someone with a hand up. I can't see the... Daniel, um, Daniel, no, Daniel's got his hand up. Hello, Daniel. Yes, morning. Uh, good afternoon, Mike. Um, fantastic um, presentation and thank you. It's been absolutely a pleasure and I um, hope you enjoyed imparting your, your knowledge. Um, Mike, um, one, of the, one of the biggest problems that I've come across, I'm, I'm in video production and uh, we create various processes, RPA processes for Facebook and LinkedIn. Whereby can I stop, can I, Daniel, can I stop you? Sure. What's RPA? I hate to uh, the acronym. Uh, robotic process automation. So, so there so we go. You all learn something new. Robotic process automation. In other words, getting people to react with the videos. Thank you. Sorry. Um, okay. So, so one of the problems that we've come across with uh, with a lot of our clients is that we we produce amazing content. We are content writers, content creation uh, creators, and we're pretty affordable. Um, but to get back to the actual issue is that a lot of people 
you know, when you talk about consistency and building trust and, uh, and, and coming across as an expert in your field, these are all the kind of things that are the building blocks in order to get to that sale. Um, yeah. But the consistency is the problem that people have. And I wanted to find out, is there an automated system whereby you create content and it will automatically post for you on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, TikTok, all of that kind of thing. So there are platforms, for example, Hootsuite is one of them, H W O T Suite, Hootsuite posts across multiple channels. I know that, for example, even Canva have what's called the social media calendar. So you can put in reminders of when you need to post your stuff. So there are things like that. There's, there's nothing that'll do it for you. Nothing will generate and post for you. you you're going to be doing one of those two things. So you've got to write the content. Yes, you've, you've got to be doing some, you've got to be creating the content or having someone like yourself. So there we are, everyone who wants to know about video, get hold of Daniel. I love, I love marketing for the people. Thanks. Anya. So please in, in the chat, go put your contact details. Because I'm about to learn something new. I didn't even know what RPA was. So I'm going to contact Daniel just to find out about RPA and how I can use that. So there are channels out there that we aren't aware of. But as Daniel says, you have to create the content. You have to get used to the idea that, that the Ben Fulmalter, my, or my, or my old mentor, used to always say, it took me 30 years to become an overnight success. He'd been in restaurants for 30 years before Megan Bean. He'd lost more money than, than he, he'd, he'd bought and sold more restaurants than I've eaten in. And all people looked at was the success and said, oh, wow, you've arrived. You're a success. It, nobody sees the slog, the, 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 the broken dreams, the heartache. The, unfortunately, it's part of the journey. It's kind of what makes us who we are. So contact Daniel. Be con yeah. Consistency. Don't don't try it once. Spend money and then phone Daniel and tell him that, tell him that you wasted your money because that's not how this works. I hope I kind of got it there. Thank you, Daniel. So yeah, the other exciting thing that I'd like to share is that we are going to be welcoming Daniel onto the AutoJet Zoom platform in the not too distant future. So that will be really interesting. It will be a first for AutoJet. But um, for today's webinar, Mark, every time I watch your webinar um, on social media, I learn so much and like Charlene said at the beginning uh, before we started we have to watch and re-watch because you share such nuggets of wisdom on every single slide there are a million notes to be made and points to be to be noted so I thank you so much for that Mark it was amazing and um, I will be sharing a copy of your presentation with everyone for everyone on our call um, Charlene, your website is outstanding. I have seen it. It is beautiful. Please contact Mike Said should you need your website redesigned. I can personally vouch for him. He, his work is truly exceptional. And before we close off today, just a quick reminder, our final business boot camp will be taking place next week, Wednesday, the 1st of September at 11 o'clock on leadership with Janet Goldblatt. So I'm going to ask Tamir to close off with our donation poll.